Hi, my name is Chinmay Thakkar and I'm a senior cloud engineer at Oracle and today we are going to go ahead and look at the OCI streaming with Apache Kafka. This is our safe harbor statement. Before we get into the service itself, uh, we look at what is streaming and why streaming is used. Streaming is the process of continuously transferring data from multiple sources at high speed and then processing it in real time. Streaming provides low latency processing and real time insights for business. Data is most important when it gets generated. Every data that gets generated from every application and from every system can set the business impulse and can bring unique customer experience. It helps you to make critical business decisions and remain competitive in the market. Streaming allows organizations to take decisions on real-time data. Real-time data processing supports personalized user experiences, instant feedback, and interactive services. Most of this data is continuous and disparate in nature from various sources such as mobile apps or application logs and IoT sensors. Streaming is capable of handling vast volumes of data from multiple sources without sacrificing performance. Streaming can help to reduce downtime and operational costs by automatically detecting and responding to operational events. Companies that leverage streaming data can adapt more quickly to market changes and customer needs and can stay ahead of their competition. Kafka has now become the de facto standard for streaming. It was originally developed in 2010 and was made open source in 2011. At its core, Kafka is a distributed, horizontally scalable, fault-tolerant commit log. Kafka excels in handling high throughput, real-time event streaming, which makes it ideal for consumers to consume data changes as a stream of events. Kafka is designed for large-scale, distributed data pipelines. If you if your use case requires scaling out your data processing pipeline horizontally, Kafka can handle that workload. Something that emerges in non-distributed systems is that they have a single point of failure. If your single database server fails for whatever reason, you are in trouble. Distributed systems are designed in such a way to accommodate failures in a configurable way. For example, in a five node Kafka cluster, you have a working environment even if two of the nodes are down. Kafka also has a rich ecosystem and community has multiple CDC connectors that allow you to integrate with databases such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, and even Oracle databases. These connectors can stream data changes, inserts, updates, deletes to specific Kafka topics. Apache Kafka, as you can see, is really very popular. 80% of the Fortune 100 companies use Apache Kafka in some way or the other. Um, you can see the numbers for different industries on your screen right now. That is why we are going ahead and getting into OCI streaming with Apache Kafka, which is a service that is 100% compatible with open source Apache Kafka. It is fully managed and has all the benefits of cloud, including reliability and security. OCI streaming with Apache Kafka is fully managed, so it automates OS patching, Kafka upgrades, any broker maintenance and compliance issues. It is highly available. It provides a 99.9% .9 SLA by automatically detecting and replacing any brokers that are down in a three minimum broker production cluster. The service is easy to use. Uh, you can go ahead and provision the cluster quite easily without any complicated steps for Kafka installation and configuration. Security is built in the service, so data is encrypted both at rest and in transit. It also integrates with the OCI key management solution. The service is at least 30% cheaper as compared to similar cluster configurations in AWS. And again, the service is 100% open source, so you can go ahead and use Kafka APIs for producing and consuming data in real time. 
allowing Kafka applications to use this service without any code changes. Some popular use cases for the Apache Kafka are change data capture, metrics and log ingestion, real-time analytics, uh, web or mobile activity data tracking. Managing Kafka at scale by yourself is not easy. There are a lot of overheads that are involved if you go ahead and deploy Kafka by yourself. As you can see on in this table, on the left-hand side, you need to go ahead and install and configure Zookeeper, Kraft, Kafka. You need to go ahead and patch your OS. Um, you patch your Kafka distribution itself. There is broker maintenance involved as well as actually replacing any faulty brokers if they're down. All of this has automatically been taken care of for you in the OCI streaming with Apache Kafka service. It also has native integration with vaults and secrets for SASL authentication, and also integrates with key management service to provide Oracle managed encryption. The Apache Kafka service on OCI is compatible with versions 3.7, 3.6, and 3.5 as of now. You are flexible to go ahead and choose your broker shapes and sizes. There are two types of clusters, as you can see, there's a development cluster or a starter cluster, and then there's a high availability or production cluster. The minimum for the development is one broker and go up to 24 brokers. For high availability, the minimum is three brokers and the max is 24 brokers. For authentication, you can go ahead and use SASL Scram authentication or and mutual TLS authentication. During an event of a broker failure in a multi-broker cluster environment, the service will automatically replace the unavailable broker with a new one without any downtime or impact on customer workloads. OCI Streaming has a rich ecosystem of supporting all open source tools like Kafka UI tools, open source schema registry, and open source Kafka connectors out of the box. If you wish to go ahead and move your existing Kafka applications to using the service, it is very simple and quite quick. They should be able to go ahead and use OCI streaming with Apache Kafka by this simple configuration change, wherein you go ahead and change your security protocol, your SASL mechanism, and then you can go ahead and provide the username and password to start using OCI streaming with Apache Kafka. In the next steps, we will go into the demo. All right, so we are at our tenancy homepage. Uh, to go ahead and locate the service, we'll go into the menu and then to developer services and then go to OCI streaming with Apache Kafka. Once you go ahead and select your desired compartment, you can click on create a cluster. In the create cluster, you give it a demo name and select the version from 3.5, 6 or 7 and click next. In the next part, you can go ahead and select the type of your cluster. So you, like we mentioned in the PowerPoint, you can either select a starter cluster, which is for test or development use, or you can choose a high availability cluster, which is recommended for a production use. We can go ahead and get started with the starter cluster. You can go ahead and define the number of brokers that you need. It can go from one up to 24 brokers. And you can also decide on the number of OCPUs each of these broker has. You can go ahead and select a minimum of two to a maximum of 80 OCPUs per broker. You can also go ahead and decide the block volume storage that is allocated per broker. You can go from a minimum of 50 to a maximum of 50 GBs to a maximum of 1000 GBs in increments of 50. These cannot be changed after the cluster has been created. 
Going next, this is the default configuration file that has been created for you. You can go ahead and change this default configuration if you need or just keep it the same. For now, we are going to go ahead and keep this the same. In this next section, you can go ahead and enable mutual TLS if you want and go ahead and provide your CA certificate over here in a PEM format. So this is a sample certificate. Uh, in this demo, we are not going to go ahead and use mutual TLS. So I'm going to go ahead and sp skip this. In the next part, you select your networking. So in what VCN does the specific cluster lie and the subnet in which this cluster should be created. Once you select them, you go ahead and click next, and then you can go ahead and review whatever you have selected in the above steps. If you're good with your uh, configuration, then you can go ahead and click on create cluster. I have already gone ahead and created a cluster. Once the cluster is up and running, it will look something like this. This is the details page of our cluster. Uh, it shows you all the uh, configuration that you have selected during the creation phase. And also you will have the cluster information over here in terms of the mutual TLS as well as SASL scram, the way you want to go ahead and authenticate to your cluster. Once you have gone ahead and created your cluster, the next thing you want to go ahead and do is uh, create your SASL scram credentials. You can go ahead and use the Oracle key management service and secret management service. You can create a vault over here. I've already created a test vault in which I have gone ahead and created a secret, which is the Kafka secret. Once you've created the secret, you can go ahead and reference that specific vault and secret over here and click on update, which will automatically go ahead and create new secret version for you with which contains your username and password. So as you can see over here, my current version is version five. And if I click on view secret contents, it will go ahead and give me my uh, username and password over here, which we will go ahead and use to create a configuration file to get access to the Kafka cluster. Another thing about the Kafka cluster is after you have gone ahead and created the Kafka cluster, you can go ahead and edit the cluster and update the number of brokers as well as the number of OCPUs per broker. And you can also go ahead and update your mutual TLS certificates if you want to go ahead and use them. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is get access to this cluster. And for that, we will have to go ahead and create a compute instance. So if you go to compute, go to instances, you can go ahead and create a simple compute instance. I've already created one. This compute instance lies within the same VCN and the subnet in which our cluster is so that it can go ahead and have access to that cluster. Now we will go ahead and SSH into the instance that we have created. On the instance, I have already gone ahead and downloaded a DGCERT global root certificate and use that certificate to go ahead and create a trust store, uh, a Java key store. I've also gone ahead and downloaded Kafka, which is compatible with the Kafka cluster that we have created in OCI. If we go into the configuration directory of this Kafka folder, you need to go ahead and create a new file called client.properties file. This file contains all the information to go ahead and connect to the cluster. As you can see, it describes the security protocol, the SASL mechanism, the trust store that we created in our previous step, the password of that, as well as the pass username and password for SASL connection to the cluster. This is the same username and password that we saw initially in our vault. Once we have created this file, we are ready to go ahead and connect to our cluster. So the first step that I'm going to do is create a new topic.
as you can see in this command it's going to go ahead and create a topic called as sample topic the bootstrap server uh, is something that we got from the console itself and we are referencing the client.properties file that we created in the previous step to connect to that server. As you can see, the sample topic has now been created. If you want to go ahead and take a closer look at the topic, I have left everything with default configuration, not changed anything, but we can go ahead and describe that topic to make sure that that topic has been created. As you can see, that topic has been successfully created. The next step that we'll do is go ahead and produce some messages to this topic. We will use a similar command for producer.sh script that is available within the Kafka that we installed. We are producing messages to the sample topic that we created. Again, the bootstrap server and the properties files remains the same. So now we are in, we can go ahead and produce some messages to this topic. All right, I've gone ahead and produced two messages. So now these messages are sent to the sample topic and we want to go ahead and try to consume those messages using a consumer. To do that, we can use a similar script that's available within Kafka that we downloaded. We are consuming messages from the sample topic from the beginning using the same server and the same properties file. So as you can see, I have already consumed both the messages that we sent initially through the producer and we have consumed those topics, consume from the sample topic and got both of those messages. This concludes the demo of how you can go ahead and create a Kafka cluster, connect to the Kafka cluster from an instance and simply create a topic, produce messages and consume messages from that. Thank you.